Hey y'all, this is Church from Church's Intake. So let's get into another reading of his word. We're going to be in uh, Jeremiah 17, um, 19 through 27. It talks about the Sabbath day must be hollow. Now, there's a lot of people that has discrepancies about the Sabbath, you know. Some people believe that the Sabbath is Sunday because they go to Sun Worship Day. They go to their church on Sunday and they believe that's the day of the Lord. But it's actually Saturday. Sometimes uh, there's another time I mentioned it. But um, God's children, you know, we got to tell the truth. We got to speak the truth and we got to be about nothing but the truth. Now, the Sabbath day is for us to keep it holy. It's actually a day of rest for us. Obviously, you know, some people's jobs, they have to work and God understands that, but he wants you to to, to make it like, um, it's a day for you to get acquainted with him even more. And if you use it in the right sense, you know, he's gonna bless you. He's gonna bless you for, you know, honoring the Sabbath and keeping it holy unto him. So I'm gonna read the passage and then I'll talk a little bit more. Thus said the Lord unto me, go and stand in the gate of the children of the people whereby the king of Judah come, come in and by the which they go out and in all the gates of Jerusalem and say unto them, hear ye the word of the Lord, ye kings of Judah and all Judah and all the inhabitants of Jerusalem that enter in by these gates. Thus saith the Lord, take heed unto yourselves and bear no burden no on the Sabbath day, nor bring it in by the gates of Jerusalem, neither carry forth a burden out of your houses on the Sabbath day. Neither do ye any work, but hollow ye the Sabbath day, as I commanded your fathers. But they obeyed not, neither inclined their ear, but made their necks stiff, that they might not hear, nor receiveth, receive instruction. And it shall come to pass, if ye diligently hearken unto, the, unto me, saith the Lord, bring to bring in no burn, uh, burden thou through the gates of this city on the sabbath day but hollow the sabbath day to do no work therein then shall ye enter unto the gates of the city kings and princes sitting upon the throne of david riding in chariots and on horses they and their princes, the men of Judah, and the inhabitants of Jerusalem, and this city shall remain forever. And they shall come from the city of Jeru Ju uh, Judah, and from the places of about Jerusalem, and from the land of Benjamin, and from the plain, and from the mountains, and from the south bringing burnt offerings and sacrifices and meat offerings and incense and bringing sacrifices of praise unto the house of the Lord. But if ye will not hearken unto me to hollow the Sabbath day and not to bear a burnt even entering into the gate a burden even entering into the gates of Jerusalem on the Sabbath day, then will I kindle a fire in the gates thereof, and it shall devour the places of Jerusalem, and it shall not be quenched. God bless the reading of his word. So, um, like I was saying before, there are a lot of people that, you know, have discrepancies about the Sabbath day. And I actually went to a school, you know, when I was younger, it was a seven day Adventist school. So they do actually worship on the Sabbath day. 
that's probably about one of the only things that they do that and they don't eat meat right that's probably one of the only things that's great about that you know denomination if you want to say it like that that they do worship on the sabbath and they do honor the sabbath the right way but other than that you know they're they don't you know not a lot of them not that i know of believing in you know being filled with the gift of the holy ghost speaking in tongues and stuff like that right but i believe god has shown me this when i was younger you know and i went to this school you know to basically learn which day was truly the sabbath day because even when i was before i went to that school i didn't even know that saturday was the sabbath you know what i mean and basically saturday is sabbath day you know it's definitely friday night sundown to saturday sundown is the sabbath day that's why you know you know the devil tries to to discourage us and try to manipulate us in our mindsets because now in america we have these seven days it actually starts it should start sunday through sunday through saturday which would be the seventh day is saturday but i don't think a lot of people acknowledge that in some calendars i think yeah no 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 on all the calendars i think it starts sunday through saturday which sabbath sabbath day is the seventh day of the week which is saturday and monday is the second day of the week sunday is the first day of the week but a lot of people we all worship you know we was brought up to worship you know that's I say Pentecostals, Apostolics, Baptists, you know, Methodists, a lot of these churches, denominations, they worship the wrong day. They worship on sunrise day, sun, Sunday, you know what I mean? Giving reverence to the pagan God, you know, for sun worship. So this was changed back in the day, you know, back in the early times of the Babylonians. And, you know, they changed the day from Saturday and to Sunday, you know, when Constantine and all of that transpired. But God wants us to get back to the Sabbath day. Like you should know the Sabbath day. Like obviously God ain't going to condemn you to hell for for not, you know what I mean, worshiping on the Sabbath day and you worship on your Sunday. I get it. But I believe also that God is actually bringing us back to remembering the true day of worship. The true day that if you honor this day, he will give you knowledge and understanding and he will bless you even more so because you are honoring the true Sabbath day. Not saying that you can't and uh, go to church on Sunday. Like there's a lot of people, you know, when I was, I'll say a few years back, you know, I'll tell people about, you know, the true Sabbath and stuff because I learned it when I was a kid. You know, I mean, I even used to tell my, my peoples like, Yo, I go to the seven day Adventist school, you know, they, they go to church on Saturday, but they wasn't really acknowledging it. Like, oh, that that's not what we do. We go to church on Sunday. You know, that's God's day. And actually, God's day is Saturday. Saturday. It's never been Sunday. And, um, you know, then uh, when I got a little older, people be like, well, I worship God on every day, which is great. Cool. But you still like being ignorant to the fact that the true worship day is on a Saturday. You know what I'm saying? Like everybody, like you said, and then he had stiff neck people. They were stiff neck. They closed their ears. They inclined. They ain't inclined to hear what God was trying to tell them. Like, yo, I can give you extra blessings. I will give you more if you honor it. Like your, I told your fathers to. It's a commandment. It's a commandment for you, technically. Yes, Jesus blessed people on the Sabbath day, healed on the Sabbath day. That's not what he's saying, because obviously he's saying, praise me on this Sabbath day. So, yes, you should be healing people on the Sabbath, you know, preaching the word of God on the Sabbath day. It wasn't about that. It was about working like in the fields and stuff like that, doing your own, your own thing, not doing God's thing. Now, the Sabbath like I said, a lot of people have discrepancies about it, but the Sabbath day, you should honor it. And you should know that this is the Lord's day, which is Saturday, Friday night to Saturday night, sundown. So by you doing this and giving reverence and saying like, listen, Lord, I'm, I'm doing it. You know what I mean? I do it. 
you know what I'm saying? It's like, but at the one point of time, I used to be like, you know, oh, I guess maybe, oh, uh, you know what I mean? They don't want to hear that, Lord. But it was just like, no, the devil don't want to hear that. The devil don't like truth. The devil is the one that tries to come up against you. The devil is the accuser. Once you know truth, you can't go back to not knowing what is true. Once God enlightens you to the truth, you can't go back and be like, nah, you know, I do it. Yeah, you can worship every day, but God wants you to hollow the Sabbath day. Make it a little special, more special. Like I said, some people do have to work their nine to fives or whatever, but you can still hollow that day. You can still go to your job. Say, say you don't read your Bible like that. Say you don't, you know what I mean? When you go to work on Saturday, right? You have to work on a Saturday. Why don't you take your lunch and just read a passage unto God? You know what I mean? Showing them that you give him reverence to him. You know what I mean? Make it a little different than any other day. And I guarantee you that he will start showing you different things. He'll start showing you. He'll give you blessings and anointing. He says this. He says it in his word. You know what I mean? He'll start showing you and enlighten you on a lot of different things because you're not a closed minded person. And it's like you want, trying your best to keep God's days and knowing, you know, who God is, because he'll show you who he is on every day. True. But that is a special day. This is a day that you should give reverence to God. Yes, you can preach out there in them streets. That's you giving your reverence to God. But this is a day between you and the Lord. And you should honor it like that. No one's saying that. You know, there's circumstances. This is not back in the day times. We know this. You know what I mean? These are new times, new endeavors out here. You know what I mean? We in new circumstances. God understands all of that. But uh, God also knows your heart, your heart posture. He knows your mind, your mindset. So by you giving reverence to this day and, you know, honoring it like to to him, like, you know, giving praise and worship to him. Just give him praise and worship on this day. Just to, like you would do it on a Sunday, right? You'll, you'll praise and worship God on a Sunday. You'll go to morning service, afternoon service or whatever. So why don't you do it on a Saturday? A lot of people go out, you know what I mean? It's, it's Saturday is a big party day for a lot of people. You know what I'm saying? You know, maybe you should turn away from partying on your Saturday. You know, or you could party. I don't know. You know, Sabbath day is over at night. So I don't know what y'all do. You know what I mean? I know when I was younger, I ain't going to hold you. I used to party on Saturday nights. You know what I mean? Maybe stay away from it on a Friday night, Saturday night. But when I was younger, I used to party. And, you know, a lot of people party on a Saturday night, go to church on a Sunday morning. You know what I mean? Act like they ain't wasn't doing they ill wills and stuff like that. Now, I'm not here to judge nobody about how they want to do what they want to do. But I'm just saying like this, man, you can get keynotes, you can get jewels if you give a little bit more to God, especially on the Sabbath day. You give him some honor, some praise, you know what I mean? Say a prayer, worship him a little bit, you know what I mean? Give him a little bit and then try to work it up a little bit more and a little bit more and I, I guarantee you that you're going to see a whole different thing in your life. You're going to be seeing blessings coming in, certain things transpiring in your life. Obviously, he'll start giving you more jewels because you're becoming more trustworthy and you're actually learning him. You're building a relationship with him. God needs us to get a relationship with him. You know what I mean? That's why he says you could have been casting out demons. You could have been speaking in these tongues that you say you speaking in, but then he says, what? Away from me. I never knew you because you never had a relationship with him. Now you can get a relationship with him on every day. I'm not saying that, but I'm just saying the Sabbath day, you know what I mean? When you start giving more reverence, like, yo, God, this is our day between me and you, you know, he'll start blessing you a little bit better and he'll start strengthening you. You know what I mean? Empowering you. And, um, like I said, I, I just say it so the truth can be known 
each one teach one. You know, that's how I believe we are all ministers unto God. No one's better than another. And that's how I believe it. And and God, you know, got me out here starting to, to read his word more. Like, I mean, I used to read his word, but actually I used to read it a little bit. And it was like more or less like I know how God always used me. It was like I always knew word that I never even read. I mean, that was just something that I just knew. It was just like embedded in me. But now, you know what I mean? In the circumstances that we in and the times that we in and when he wants us to follow him even more, I'm going to tell you, like before these circumstances had happened, I never really read the word. I kind of like knew the word. It was weird. It was like I knew it was like he was always talking to me because I always had like some type of relationship with Christ. Even when I was sinning, I was a sinner, sinner. You know, what I mean, I was a party man and all of that. But his word was always in, in, in my heart, embedded in me. You know, I knew I was a sinner, but I always knew I can repent for my sins. And he always had my back. You know what I'm saying? And a lot of people don't have that. But I'm just saying he has some kids out here that know the word without even looking at the word. And I was one of those. I would just know scripture. Like, and, and people be like, yo, why you sound like you talking from the Bible? And I'm like, what you mean? And then they'll just be like, yo, that's from this. Uh, and I'm like, oh, well, wow. But I know that's what Christ was in me. You know what I mean? He was there telling, you know, speaking through me and stuff like that. And um, yeah, I have a relationship with Christ. And I believe everybody should have a relationship with Christ, even while you're sinning. Don't think because you're a sinner, God ain't with you, talking to you and, and guiding you in the right way. Because if anyone's telling you these, this is not true, they're lying to you. God loves the sinner. He wants to turn you from your sins. And he's going to work on you and work you until you get it right. That's what God is here for. He's here for the sinner. He ain't here for the person that think they know it all or got everything together. You know what I mean? You can see it with the the, uh, the the passage with the rich man. He thought he did everything right, but he was wrong. You know what I'm saying? He thought he had it all. He had he had riches. He 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 was he was taught up in the way of God. You know, as a young lad, but God wanted him to have faith, and he didn't have that type of faith. Get rid of all your riches and follow me. You know what I mean? This is a new word because he's a living word. He was a living word right then. And guess what? I believe if he did get rid of all of his riches and followed him, you know, God would have gave him all of his riches back plus a hundredfold. But because he didn't have faith in God to, to lose the material gains that he had at that time, he lost it. He was too scared. He fell short. So know that, you know what I mean? I believe that, you know, and this is like God's out here for all the sinners. And, and a lot of people that's in the body of Christ that be, you know, rebuking the sinners and, oh, you were drunk, this, that, and the third, don't come in this church and this, that, and like that. And God's judging you for things like that. Them natures, you know what I mean? Gossiping on others, you know what I mean? Ridiculing others, you know what I'm saying? Like, that's not of God. It never has been of God. God was never like, yo, you can't come to his temple, like, to get healing, like, what type of people do you think needs to go to the church? A sick person has to go to the church to be healed. A sick person would be a person that is a drunkard. A sick person would be a person that is under the influence of drugs. A sick person would be someone that has an illness as well. Those are the people that are supposed to come to the church and be healed by the men of God or the women of God. Not the ones that think they, you know what I mean, dress to impress and all of that craziness. They don't need no healing the way they coming in. They don't need no, no deliverance the way they coming in. Now they all do. They all need to uh, reproach. Everybody needs to check their they heart posture. Everybody needs to check they, their pride. Everybody needs to check their arrogance. But a lot of these people in the church today think they're better than others. And that's why a lot of these sinners out in the street don't go to church. So watch that. Correct that. That's what God is here for. He wants correction. He wants you to be out in the street. Jesus was a street preacher, baby. 
He was out in these streets. He wasn't in them temples like that. He was in the temples going against the Sadducees and the Pharisees, the ones that's in your church today. Those are Sadducees and Pharisees, the ones that believe they're better than another. They thought they was better than Jesus, dog, because they knew the word. But the devil knows the word. The devil's children know the word. The hearts of the men was wicked. They was trying to transpire against the dude. Trying to transpire against our Christ. They thought they was better than our Christ. They wanted him dead because he was speaking the truth. Know that. So I'm going to leave that one right there. Happy Sabbath day, y'all. Tell a friend. Like, subscribe, share. Church, churches, and take. I love you. God loves you more.